Hello, test awesome. Thanks, Alana. Uh, yeah, so as Alana said, uh, right now I'm leading DX and AI at Subabase. Uh, so super stoked to uh, chat more about the MCP launch uh, that Koppel mentioned this morning. Um, and also because I like to torture myself, uh, I might attempt a live demo at the end of this. Um, uh, I, someone convinced me right before the presentation to do this, so we'll, uh, we'll see if we have time for that. All right, so in, uh, back in April this year, we launched the initial version of our uh, Superbase MCP server. Uh, this allowed you to connect your uh, favorite AI agent, uh, like Cursor or maybe uh, Windsurf at the time, uh, with uh, Superbase. Uh, so this meant that you could continue to use your, you know, your favorite AI IDE um, while also giving it like a full view into your database. Uh, so practically speaking, you could do things like list tables, but maybe more useful, you could actually uh, use it to help you create new tables in your database or maybe modify columns, all while uh, following best practices like storing these in database migrations. Um, and to be honest, though, I think for me, the, the real value of MCP in general and Subbase MCP is the fact that now everything can just be in one place, right? You as a developer no longer have to like context switch jump between your IDE, uh, Subbase dashboard uh, to get what you need to come back. It's all just centralized, which is awesome. Um, but there were some core features missing initially. Uh, you guys said, what the heck, we're missing edge functions. Uh, and of course, you know, if you're building an app and the built-in REST APIs that are auto generated uh, don't do what you need, you're probably going to lean on edge functions to build um, kind of the custom APIs that you need for your app. Uh, so we said, what the heck, you're right. Uh, so then we added uh, the ability for the uh, LLM to actually create edge functions to MCP as well. Uh, and this actually worked uh, really great for a lot of people. Um, so actually, as of the past couple months now, um, we're seeing over 20,000 monthly active users with our MCP server. Um, so clearly, this is the daily driver for a lot of folks, um, which is super awesome to see. Now, of course, every story or presentation, uh, at least a good presentation doesn't come out with, uh, go through without a couple of challenges, right? So uh, we'll start with challenge number one with our MCP server, and it's, uh, it's basically this command right here. Um, so assuming some of you guys have actually tried using the MCP server, you're probably familiar with this command. Um, this command is actually running the server locally on your machine using Node.js, uh, using the command npx. Uh, and it turns out that this command is actually uh, pretty inconsistent across different environments. Uh, so first of all, of course, you need to be running a specific Node.js version. That's what NPX is doing under the hood. Um, so that's kind of a given um, to have that set up properly. But also at the same time, uh, it turns out this actually runs differently across different operating systems. So if you're a Windows user and you try to run a lot of these commands, you probably have hit walls and uh, Windows goes about this a different way than Mac OS. It goes different than Linux. And it's just, in general, a big pain point. Uh, so much so that our number one issue on our MCD repo is literally this. Um, to this day, uh, yeah, there's just been tons and tons of reports of people having issues with this command. Um, we went down a huge rabbit hole trying to get it to work with as many environments as we could, but it's hard to, to cover everything. That's challenge number one. Challenge number two is personal access tokens or authentication in general. Um, so... How do you authenticate this MCP server or like your MCP client in general with um, Superbase, like your Superbase account? So to make it work in this context, you'd have to literally go to um, your, the Superbase dashboard, go into your settings, generate manually a personal access token, come back, pop that into this CLI command argument. Uh, and then on top of all that, remember to never commit this to Git, because if you do, you're probably going to leak your credentials. Uh, and sadly, there were some cases of this happening. Uh, so security, not as good as it could be. Uh, and last but not least, um, you might have heard this of this uh, web app called ChatGBT. Uh, uh, this one, uh, they actually added support for MCP as of last month, which is pretty, super exciting. It, it's, it's, it's available in like their developer mode is what they call it. Um, but of course, this only works if you have like a remote MCP URL. You can't pop in a uh, NPX command like this. Of course, it's not gonna, uh, that's not gonna fly. So for all these reasons, uh, we're super stoked to now, as of today, release our remote MCP server. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> um, and 
the best part is, is as simple as using this URL right here. So uh, this is personally what I love about it compared to everything that we just went through. You can just copy and paste this into your client of choice, cursor, uh, cloud code, uh, whatever you prefer. Uh, and that's pretty much all you need to get started right off the bat. Um, so, and this also means for the first time, you can actually chat with your Subbase project directly from ChatGPT. So you can do this today. Um, so in this example, we're chatting with the table. What we have in my database is giving me exact insight into my Subbase project. The other thing that we added to the remote MCP server is what the spec calls MCP off, which if you've gone into this rabbit hole, this is basically off to under the hood with some extensions on top of it. So um, to be honest, this was more than half of the work to get the remote MCP working is getting um, all the OAuth stuff working as well. What does this really mean for you? It means that there's no more personal access tokens, no more copy and pasting tokens, no more risk of committing them to uh, source control. This demo here is using cursor where essentially you just pop in the URL, you hit uh, that connect button, it's going to pop you over to your browser, you just grant access because you're already logged into your Subbase account, uh, and then it pops back. So the typical OAuth flow that we're all used to. Uh, actually, we, we had our eyes on this flow since pretty much the very beginning, but of course this only works with remote, um, remote MCP servers, it does not work with uh, the local, the other one's called a standard IO approach. And this actually is the one that I'm most excited for of them all. And this is actually um, the ability to run MCP completely local on your local Subbase stack. So this command here, Subbase start, this is nothing new. Um, if you're familiar, this is actually running a full local development stack on your computer. Uh, under the hood, this is using Docker to take all the Subbase services and run them within containers on your machine. Um, and this is kind of our standard local first approach. Um, and up until now, there is really no good way to connect MCP with that, unless you just wanted to use like the Postgres MCP and do a direct Postgres connection kind of thing. Um, so also as of today, you can run Subbase start with the latest version of our CLI, and you'll now get this new MCP URL at the bottom, and you can connect this to your, um, like all the other ones, you connect it to cursor, cloud code, whatever your preferred, um, client is. Uh, and it's actually, I don't know why I was surprised by this. It's like really fast, of course, like <laughs> what's faster than local, um, but uh, I, it, I, yeah, it shocked me just uh, how, how nice it was to work with. So as a summary, uh, if you're connecting to a hosted version of, of Subbase, you would use this URL. And if you're connecting to a local version, use this URL. Okay, um, so that brings us to today. Um, some things that I would also love to go through is some other features we added to the MCP server itself in terms of tools and ways you can use it that I think you guys will find hopefully useful. Uh, so feature number one is what we call feature groups. Uh, and this is the ability to essentially choose which tools you want to actually expose to your clients. And this is useful for two reasons, uh, or at least two reasons that I can think of. So reason number one would be, uh, uh, lots of, lots of clients like say cursor actually will limit the number of tools you can have or MCP servers you can connect to, um, cursor. At least this was a previous limitation, but in general, LMs can only have so much context when you're providing tools to it. Um, so I think by default, our MCP server exposes like over 25 tools uh, and say cursor's limit was 40, then you're already eating up like a large budget of tools available, right? And if you don't actually care about using all these tools, you only want to actually have access to your database and maybe some debugging tools, then you can scope that down and have more control over that. Um, the other reason why this is useful is for security. Let's say that you never actually want your LM to ever access uh, edge functions on your project, but you want to give a database access or maybe vice versa. Don't touch the database, but help me create these edge functions. You can come in here and choose just the edge function group uh, and expose just those tools to the LM. The ones that you don't choose won't even be shown at all. They'll have, they will never have access. Um, and actually, what you're looking at right here is um, what we're calling our URL builder. So this URL builder, just it, this actually lives right in the dashboard. So if you go into the dashboard, that connect button at the top, and then the MCP tab on the right, um, you can use this to actually do some toggles like read-only mode, feature groups, uh, and it'll actually build you a custom URL that you can copy and paste into your client. It'll also allow you to scope this directly to just a single project, so you can be confident that the MCP server is only um, interacting with a single project and not multiple projects. Okay, the next thing that we added is doc search. So the you know, probably if anyone here has worked with LLMs, I assume everybody, uh, you know that, that one of the biggest challenges is knowledge cutoff, right? 
And one thing that I um, was actually surprised about on the early days, like back in 2023, was actually how good the LMs still were with Superbase. Like they actually had pretty good knowledge even back then. Um, it, they were amazing though. Um, fast forward till today, I'd say a lot of the LMs, like the flagship ones are like really great. Like they understand a lot of Superbase. Um, but the problem is, is it's never going to be like fully up to date, right? There's always that knowledge cutoff and it's not going to have the most update to date information. So let's say there's something that we launched literally let's say today uh, and you want to start working with that immediately. The, your LM isn't going to have knowledge about that and won't know how to work with it. So to solve this, we created a tool called Search Docs, which gives you uh, under the hood, we, we created a what we call our content API. It's actually a GraphQL based API over our documentation that you can use to um, uh, provide that to the LM and it can search over the docs for basically it's always up to date uh, current information from our docs. Um, under the hood, we're also using a hybrid search approach. So if you've gone down like the rabbit hole of embeddings and um, keyword search, we're using that same technology from our docs uh, for this tool. Okay, next is what we call advisors. So the challenge here is how do you know that the LM is actually following best practices? Um, especially with MCP, you can connect this to any LM. You can connect it to the best models out there and you can connect it to local models on your machine that maybe aren't so good. Um, so how do you know that these are actually producing like high quality SQL? And so the way to ground that is through what we call advisors. Advisors are actually something that already exists on top of Superbase. And you can think of them as like lints on top of your SQL. So um, looking for best practices. Right now we have two types of uh, advisors. One is performance advisors and one is security advisors. So it'll actually scan your database and look for things like, are you creating RLS policies? Are you following best practices uh, on your database? And then in this example, you can see like, why is my query slow? Uh, and we're talking to ChatGPT. And so instead of ChatGPT giving me like a general, oh, your, your database might be slow because of this, this, and this, is literally looking directly at my database and saying, oh, you got this to-dos table, you're missing an index. Here's what we can do to fix that. Okay, and finally, we added some initial support for storage. So we have storage buckets at Superbase. And so this just gives the LLM uh, the ability to check which uh, storage buckets exist and change some configuration. So it's, it's basic to start, but we're looking to add more features like, um, you know, insight into actual files within your buckets and like analyzing the details on those. Um, the cool one about the storage tools is this was actually a community contribution. Um, so yeah, what I would say there is if you guys ever feel like there's a feature missing from the MCP server and you're like, this would be really great to have, like, by all means, please create a pull request. Um, we work in public, we work in the community, we're all uh, working on the same code base. So uh, please submit those. Okay, and then what's next for the future? There's three things I'm excited for for what's next. Um, number one would be fine grain permissions. So uh, earlier I was talking about how we have the uh, MCP auth, but you can see in the screenshot here that we have you basically have to give it all or nothing, right? You give it read or write access to database, edge function, storage, all that in one like binary decision. So what, where we want to go with this is each one of these should actually be a toggle that at this point in time, you can choose exactly which ones you want to expose. So, I mean, we already have feature groups that give you the, this capability, but this actually narrows it down to um, which features are available at the access token level. Um, so like the most secure way possible to do that. Okay, next uh, is local first. So uh, like I said, super excited to support um, local MCP with the local stack. Uh, but I think there's a lot of more things we can do around this. Um, basically, we want, to, we want to double down on this. This is something that I think there's lots of room for improvement, maybe some integration with a CLI. Uh, just make that local dev experience first class with MCP. Okay, this last one. I know I keep on saying I'm excited. I'm excited about all these features. Um, uh, you might have asked, your, like, asked, what about you? Like, what if you want to build an, your own MCP server on top of your existing apps and projects within Superbase? So I'm super stoked to share that we have on the roadmap where we're currently working right now uh, on the ability for you yourself to also create an MCP server on your apps on top of Superbase. So we're basically using the playbook and the lessons learned as we built our own MCP that we just presented today. Take all those learnings and we're going to apply those to allow you to give you all the tools you need to um, build your own MCP, including MCP auth with all the OAuth 2 protocol you need for your own project um, and remote MCP support as well. All right. So uh, do we have time for a demo? Two minute demo? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. 
Uh, I was hoping that maybe uh, oh, we had a random time. Okay. Uh, so here we go. Uh, so what I've done, so what I have here is um, LM Studio. Anybody use LM Studio before? Maybe. So there's Olama, there's LM Studio. What, what this does is this allows you to run uh, models completely locally on your machine. So the reason why I wanted to demo this today is because I think it's like now that we have local MCP support, I, th I thought it'd be super cool to like do like a fully offline, like you could do this on an airplane kind of thing. A lot of airplanes have internet now, but uh, you can't use that example, I guess. Um, but you get the idea. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've actually already set up the MCP server, but I'll show you how that was set up. If I go into um, the details, it's just an mcp.json file. So what I've done is I'm sure we're all familiar with this JSON file. Pretty much every uh, client follows the same uh, format. And unlike the old uh, standard I.O. command, is all it is is a simple URL that you can pass into here. So I've already spun up a local Superbase stack using the start command. Um, it's using the latest stable build. And I pop that into here. If I come back over here, you can see that it has now connected that. And you can see all the tools that are listed here. So first I can say something like, oh, actually, let me load the model first. That might be important. So I have GPT OSS, the 20 billion version. Uh, I'm going to load that one up right now. Uh, that was very quick. Uh, so it looks like we're good to go there. I've already added the MCP server as contacts here. I'm just going to say, uh, what tables do I have? available we had a failed tool call but then it figured it out okay so it's going to first list the tables to see what's available this is very common with mcp and we're saying looks like you don't have any tables that's what we expected so uh, please help me create a to-dos table so these would be like a hello world type of app to-dos um, this is like a classic thing that you do. Now, I'm going to say this right now from a security side, always read the SQL that it generates before you run it. Uh, I know a lot of you guys like to do like the YOLO modes. Um, we do not recommend that. So please read it, what it's doing. Okay, we're creating a table. Public to-dos looks pretty good. Pretty impressive from a local model. So let's go ahead and proceed. By the way, local models are like, like tool call capabilities in general with local models have notoriously bad so the fact that this is working with tool calls is in my opinion like amazing um so there's a new table i can say okay great um can you confirm by listing the tables let's just confirm that awesome it found that rls is not enabled uh, so we could do that, but instead, let's just quickly check what it has. Okay, so we have an ID column title completed and created out. Let's add a category column so we can track, you know, which category these to-dos to belong to. It's going to apply a new migration. I didn't read it. <laughs> I just blindly, I just blindly clicked it. Uh, okay, Oof. simple command. We're good there. And then finally, we can say, can you show me which migrations I've run. So it's going to call this migrations. And we have our two, two migrations, one that created the to-use table and one that added the category to do's. So this happened completely offline using fully local super base and 